Good morning, friends. It's Chrissy with Pink Garnet Vintage and More. I am in the antique mall this morning, and I just wanted to point out a few small things that you should be on the lookout when you're out sourcing. And these are great items that you can sell online as well as in your antique mall, and or in your booth if you have one in the antique mall. But they seem to be, when I travel across the country and stuff, they seem to be really popular all over the place. So I just wanted to share a couple of these things with you that I've personally have had luck with online and in the mall. So one of them is I was walking around and I saw this is um, a smoking pipe um, display stand and it has the uh, humidor here in the middle, which you can sell these stands and this alone, which this dealer is. Um, but also the pipes is mainly what I wanted to point out. I was at an auction one time um, this last year and I bought... I think four flats of old smoking pipes for I think 19 or $20. And you know, I didn't know what was in there, but I just knew that they were a sought after item. And actually on average, most of the pipes sold for around 14, $15. So if you think about that, I had that many flats full and I mean, they were full and then spent that much money. So the first two, I made money, you know, so it was pure profit. And I didn't know a lot about all of the brands when I did start going through them. But when you get the pipes, if you look, each one of them, I don't know if you can see that or not, most of them, I shouldn't say all, but most of them somewhere on the sides here usually will have the brand or a name or where it was made or something by it. There you go. You can see that. Um, so what you want to do is you want to Google that. And a lot of times you'll find them already listed on eBay. I'm going to set this down a minute just so I can show you a little bit better. Um, here's another one. I don't know if that'll zoom in to see that or not. I don't know. It's right about there, but sometimes it'll just say like made in England or made wherever, but oh, here's more. And sometimes on both sides, it'll have information. So look for on the sides of the pipes first for any information and type that in when you're doing your research. Usually you can find that brand or something like it already on eBay and then do your research. They do um, twist apart here, which when I first started selling pipes years ago, I had no idea. Um, my dad used to smoke them, but I never paid attention. So you can take them apart here just to make sure. Most of the time they'll unscrew. Sometimes they slide in and out, but the better ones usually will screw like this here. But it might be good just to check it, make sure it's not real dirty or caked up. It really does not matter as far as my sales went that, I don't know if you can see how chewed up this is, because a lot of guys, like women, men or women, whoever uses them, they chew or suck on this end. And that really isn't as big of an issue because sometimes they'll replace them, sometimes they don't. What's more important is the quality and the condition of the actual pipe itself. And that's what they look for. But some of them are way more sought after than others. So like I said, if I bought the three flats for say $20, it was 19 something I think. And an average pipe sale was 14, 15 bucks, think of the profit that I had on that. It was amazing. It was one of my best finds and they were small and they went, most of them went um, three to eight ounces um, first class mail. So I just bubble wrapped them and put them in small boxes that I had found and it was cheap and I charged shipping. I didn't do free shipping because they went all over the place. So, but anyway, that's something to keep your eye out for. And like I said, definitely, I did have some that sold um, in the $20, $30 range, and I think I had two that sold for 40 plus. So it really does make a difference, but you do the research on the name. If they don't have a name on them, see, I think, I don't know, this one does too, but this one's on the bottom if you can't I don't know if you can see it. But let's just say you find one and there is no name. So if that happens, use your best judgment as far as describing. Does it look like it's hand carved? Does it look like it's made out of, you know, walnut? Whatever. Put your best guess on there and type that into the description and just see what pops up and put unbranded. And then you'll probably get less money for it than if they 
had a name or a marking or where they were from, but it's still worth it. But there is good money in smoking pipes, vintage smoking pipes, so I highly recommend that. I have found the ones that look like corn cobs, which I don't know if they have any on here. No. There's some that look like corn cobs. There's only, um, I think, one or two brands that are sought after. The most of them, you know, they're like 5 to $9 that you'll get. So just keep that in mind. The, the wood ones seem to be more sought after. So anyway, that's a little bit on the smoking pipes. Another good find, if you can find them at sales, auctions, whatever, are these little, um, I don't know if you can see that or not, Singer... You can see that right there. Singer um, thumb pumps, oil pumps. Um, and what they would do is they would use their thumb on the bottom, like that there, and they would use these to lubricate their sewing machines. And they're highly collectible. This one still has oil in it, you can see. Yeah, so I'm about to wipe that off. But they're highly collectible. Um, and then there's also people that buy them and decorate with them. There's people that buy and repurpose them. And on average, like this one here is $12. So, I mean, this is only maybe two inches tall. But it's again, it's super light. It's something that you can put in a Ziploc bag, put a little bit of packing around and shove it in a small box and send it. Um, most of these, I would say, would probably be like the three to eight ounce weight also. So you can do it first class, cheap to ship. And there are different variations. Not all of them have the marking on them. And if they have no marking on them, you know, they might be like four or five bucks. But when you can find them with the actual name of the sewing machine, like Singer especially, um, you can get about 12 bucks for them. And a lot of times you can find those at an auction or a rummage sale for 10 cents or like a dollar for a flat of them because people just think it's junk and they want to get rid of them. Um, I don't recommend to clean them up a lot. A lot of people like to get these and they want to polish them and clean them. I don't recommend that. I recommend just to wipe them off, which this person didn't do real well because like I said, I'm getting oil on myself. But I recommend to wipe them off and then just sell them as is because people don't want them to look pristine and brand new. You know, especially collector, it can devalue it actually. So that's two things that I highly recommend that you look for that are small and easy to ship. Another one are actually old maps. And these, I mean, there's several of them here that I can show you, but these are paper, so they can go first class, very easy to ship. But like this one here, um, that's 10 bucks retail, but you can get 10 to 15 bucks for these, for the good ones. Um, sometimes you can get more, but on average it's about 10 to $15 and I don't want to take this all apart because it's not mine, but, um, there's several of them. This one here is 1960s. I mean, if they're really bad condition, you might only get like, I don't know, six or seven bucks, but on average, you know, you can get 10 to 15 for nice ones with good graphics and good condition and they're easy to ship. And a lot of times you can get these at rummage sales free or dirt cheap for a big lot of them. Um, and if you have some really good condition ones, I would sell them individually. I wouldn't sell them as a complete lot. But if you have some that are in bad condition, you may want to bundle them all together and do them for one money. But I see at auctions, you can get like a huge box of these with other stuff for a dollar because people just are losing their mind and there's too much going on and they don't know what's in the box. So these are always something good to keep your eye out for. All right. Another thing are old soda bottles. So I did not understand this when I got into antiques that people like collect these old soda bottles, even though it's dirty, grungy looking, but this one in particular says J.B. Bush, BRC Co., Washington, Missouri. It's embossed. And then you can tell by the glass, besides it looking dirty, and I don't know if you can see it on the picture, but there's like an iridescent, I don't know if you can see that or not, if it's showing up on your end. There's like an iridescent glow or look to it versus, let me show you this one. This one's from 45. It's a little bit... Different. I don't know if you can tell the difference in the glass. They're both clear glass. But 
this is 45 and then today's are even totally different but it, in 45 it still was embossed this is a pepsi cola one i don't know if you can see that but just to use the, <clears throat> these two samples this one here um <laughs> Yeah, it's from the 1860s, so that gives you an idea, but there's definitely some weight to this. I mean, I would say that this is probably at least a pound, and then, like, this is a 45 bottle that I said clearly you can tell the difference in the thickness by these rings down here, and like I said, the weight, and if you can see the metallic look on the really old ones versus this here. So this bottle here will retail for 50 bucks. You sometimes will get more on an auction online if it's, um, you know, sought after by a collector. So that's definitely something to keep your eyes out for. I don't recommend to clean these really well. I would leave them in the condition, like clean them like with soap and water, but I wouldn't clean them really good because a lot of collectors want to do their own thing. If you have one that's caked with mud inside and just really, really nasty, you can put some BBs in there, um, little BB pellets, and then put in some dish soap and some water and then just shake it up really good and that breaks all that clunky, crappy stuff up to clean that out. But I wouldn't do a really good job to like, scrub and clean it because that's I would leave that up to the collector so like I said 50 bucks on average for retail may more may get more on an auction than this 45 Pepsi Cola bottle you know it's not worth as much you'll probably get they have 250 on it but you probably get you know three to five bucks for these some bottles are more collectible than others and then as you get newer you know they're about that but we sell the heck out of soda bottles and the average sale is about five bucks for most of the soda bottles but when you get back in the 1900s and prior i mean they can go for a crazy amount of money so again they're easy to ship you just bubble wrap them they're heavy duty so they're not real fragile um but just bubble wrap them put them in a small box and ship them like i said this one's a pound so you would probably have to do priority mail which for a $50 1800s bottle, I think I would priority email it anyway. But, um, you know, if I had a bunch of these, I would just lot them together and sell the lot. And I think you would get more money for them. But anyway, those are just three things I wanted to share with you that are small, easy to store, easy to ship, and fast turnarounds, whether you have an antique mall booth or if you want to sell them online. So I hope that helps somebody out there. And until next time, stay awesome.